Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today I'm going to show you how to make a king size bed with built in storage. Essentially, the bed is going to be made up of two cabinets. Each cabinet is going to have a 2x4 frame underneath it to lift it off the ground. I used a stop block to cut down four pieces for the cross braces, and then I cut two long pieces for the sides of the frame. I measured out where I wanted the cross pieces to sit, and then marked them with a scrap 2x4. Then I matched up the other side and transferred the marks. The arrows are to remind me which direction to make the pocket holes. I used this pocket hole jig and drilled two holes in each one of these sections to connect the cross pieces. Then I laid it all out on the ground, held it in place, and screwed it together. I didn't add glue to these joints, but you certainly could, and it would just make it that much stronger. Then make two of these frames exactly the same. I don't have a truck, so when I buy plywood, usually I'll have them cut it in half so I can move it easier. I used this guide to help me trim it down to the right sizes. This guide is really easy to use and I was really surprised at how well it worked. Definitely going to be something I'm going to use a lot more. I cut down a strip to use for the back of the cabinet. This is going to be the total height that I want. Then I cut down pieces to use for the top and the bottom. Finally, I trimmed down five pieces to use as the dividers in the cabinet. Then I ripped them down to the height to match the back panel that I had cut earlier. Usually, adding drawer slides can be kind of a pain, but these are actually pretty easy. You just align them to the bottom and front of the sides. It takes three screws, and you can usually adjust them after you get them in. For the interior panels of this cabinet, you're going to put slides on both sides. For the outside panels, you only put them on one side. On the back panel, I drew a line where I wanted each divider to go, keeping in mind that each one is a half an inch thick. These lines make it really easy to line up the divider when you go to nail it on. Just add some glue and then use the lines that you drew to keep it square to the back. Then I was ready to add the top. I used the same measurements that I used on the back panel and transferred them to the top piece. I used a square to draw the lines all the way across the top panel. This would help when I went to shoot the nails in to make sure that I was shooting down into the divider. After putting a thick bead of glue on the top of every one of the pieces, I laid the top on. Now this plywood was pretty bent, so I made sure to shoot nails in the corners first and then bend the more flexible pieces into shape as I needed to nail them down. This was especially true with the dividers because there was nothing holding them square to the back. I used lots of nails to get the top on really well, flipped it over, and then did the exact same thing for the bottom panel. And of course, I had to make two of these cabinets. The area between these two cabinets was just going to be filled with some 2x4 cross braces. I cut down several to length, and then used a pocket hole jig to drill two holes into the end of each piece. This takes a little while, but it's a pretty good joint and it's definitely worth it. Then it was time to make the drawers. Since you'll actually see the drawers, I used birch plywood for them and it looks a lot nicer. The cabinets won't ever actually be seen. I cut these pieces down to the right length and then set up a dado stack on my table saw. This groove will hold the bottom panel of the drawer, which is just made out of 8th inch plywood. Now of course there are much fancier ways to make the joints on a drawer, but in my case a butt joint worked just fine. I added some glue and then used some brad nails to hold it in place. Attach three sides and then slide in the drawer bottom. Then add the last panel with glue and nails. I added a strip of plywood scrap across the middle of the drawer and then nailed and glued it in place just to reinforce the bottom. Then it was time to add the drawer slides to the side of the drawers. They come out really easily using a little lever, and then you align them with the front and the bottom of the drawer and screw them on with three screws. They can be a little tedious to reattach, but you'll hear it click and then you're good to go. 
for the face of the bed, I was using some reclaimed oak barn wood that my grandfather gave me from Kentucky. I sanded it down just enough to get rid of the rough stuff and the dirt. On the cabinet, I laid it even with the back end of the bed and then made a mark right in the center of the divider. Since this wood is pretty bowed, a flexible ruler made it much easier to draw a straight line. Then I measured over an inch and a quarter from my cut line and put on a straight edge to use as a guide for the saw. A straight edge like this makes it a lot easier to get a straight cut on a piece of wood with such a regular surface. I used the same process to cut both the other drawer fronts. To add the drawer front, I held it in place making sure the bottom was positioned at the bottom of the drawer and then clamped it on, both on the bottom and the top. I used a countersink bit to make six holes in the back and then screw it together. I could have put glue on the back of the barn wood, but I wasn't sure if I was going to have to adjust later on, so I just left it unglued and it seems to be holding on just fine. Then I just did the same process for all the rest of the drawers. Then I covered the whole thing with some polycrylic. It doesn't really color the wood, but it brings out the contrast, which is really nice, and it makes it a little bit smoother to the touch. To assemble each cabinet, I laid it upside down and then put the frame even with the backside and the head end of the bed. These frames are one inch undersize on both directions to make it easier to open the drawers. I used some rubber standoffs to make sure that it didn't mar up the floor. I put them on both sides and in the middle. Then I just added the drawers. Sometimes when you get to putting them all in, they can be a little hard to deal with. But just keep trying, you'll get them all in there and they'll line up. To attach the cabinets with the cross braces, I cut a piece of 2x4 the same height as the cabinet. This allowed me to make sure that the 2x4 and the top of the cabinet were even. Use the same process all the way down, adding all the cross braces. You could glue these in as well, but I didn't since I wasn't sure if I would need to change it later or take it apart to get it out of the bedroom. I added another 2x4 on each end of the bed. Now this is a case where I had a plan to make a mitered edge on the corner, and it just didn't work out. The wood was too bowed and started to crack, so I ended up just making a butt joint. I put pocket holes all along the back side of this, held the big piece in place, and then attached it with screws, making sure to get the tops all lined up on both ends. Then I ripped some pallet wood down to one inch strips to cover up the 2x4 base. Now, I forgot to polyurethane them, but I came back and did it later. I got a mattress from this awesome company called Casper. They're an online mattress retailer and they sell them for about a third of the price of what you would pay in a store. Cool thing is they ship it to you in a big box, and then you get to open it up with this little knife. Check this out. It was pretty awesome to watch this thing fill up with air. It was like it was just taking a huge breath and it really didn't take very long. These mattresses are made of a combination of latex and memory foam, and they are seriously, seriously comfortable. I'm not just saying that. We've really enjoyed sleeping on it. Casper also gave me a $50 off coupon code that you can use, and a link. They're both in the description below. Be sure to check them out. These things are made in America, and the coolest thing is they'll let you sleep on it for 100 nights, and if you don't like it for any reason, they'll come pick it up. They're pretty awesome. Check them out. Thanks, Casper, for sponsoring this project. And in my house, big cardboard boxes are just about the best thing ever. So here it is, all finished. Turned out pretty good. Of course, you may not have barn wood or may not want barn wood on your bed, and you could use any number of things to face it. You could use a nice plywood to make it a lot more modern, or you could use pallet slats to make it even more rustic. But the construction underneath is going to stay the same, regardless of what you put on the outside of it. I hope you like this project, and if you did, let me know in the comments below or at iliketomakestuff.com. You can find me on your favorite social network, so show me some stuff that you're working on. I'd love to see it. I've got more projects for you to check out if you're interested, as well as a podcast that I do with Jimmy Duresta and David Picciuto called Making It. Just about making stuff with your bare hands, as well as a playlist of past brain pick episodes. That's a live QA show that I do on YouTube, and it gives you, the viewer, a chance to ask questions to content creators and get them answered right away. It's a lot of fun. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.